Hey guys, I'm Simon, and today we'll be going deep into some of the lore for League of Legends. Oh, wait, did you say League of Legends doesn't have lore anymore? Yeah, so if you're even remotely interested in the lore of League of Legends, you've probably heard that Riot has retconned the entire game. Well, not the entire game, some individual characters will have most of their lore remain after the great lore wipe, but many others weren't so lucky. So what exactly was changed? Well, a dev blog written by Tommy Knox on behalf of the entire narrative team at Riot, called Exploring Runeterra, gave us the rundown. Basically, Riot is removing the League from League of Legends and the Summoners from Summoner's Rift. How can there be a League of Legends without a League, you may ask my ornery viewer? Well, apparently, the story in League of Legends has expanded so greatly that the designers of the narrative element are finding it difficult to relate new champion lores to this old anchor they constructed at the start of the game's life. To understand this a little easier, let's get into what the old lore for the League was. In the beginning, Runeterra was being ravaged by war between Demacia and Noxus, the two largest standing forces at the time. Now, all that spell flinging and magical mayhem was starting to impact the world in a negative way through earthquakes and other natural disasters. This is when three all-powerful summoners came forth with an idea to save the land while also settling the disputes of these warring nations. Their idea gave birth to the Institute of War, an organization which settled international arguments through a tournament. Basically, instead of all these armies going at each other in the real world, devastating everything in sight, they could just duke it out on the fields of justice. On the Fields of Justice, the Summoners would be able to limit the environmental impact these wars would cause, and the nations didn't have to waste lives and money actually fighting. It's a win-win! Well, unless you lose. With the Institute founded, the three all-powerful Summoners still needed to form the tournament. Disputes would be decided by a contest between Summoners who represented opposite sides of an argument. These less skilled Summoners, aka me, you, and every other League player in the world, would take control of willing and not-so-willing champions. With these champions, it's our duty to fight the opposing team to determine a winning side. This is the basis from which all of Riot's lore for League of Legends was founded. All of the original champions onwards up until just recently made some reference to the League, the Institute, or to Summoners themselves. Now, the Institute of War and Summoners are no longer going to be a thing, but why did they come to this decision? Riot's narrative team wrote a lot about inconsistencies and challenges they faced while trying to fit new lore for the game into the old story they had already forged. They talked a lot about the restrictive nature of having things like an institute of war which solved all problems and stopped all conflicts, and the issues which arose from the idea of summoners controlling the champions. Having an all-powerful council hold tournaments to end all disputes going on just seemed like a boring way to craft a world in their eyes. The Institute of War was flawless and reigned as the governing lawmakers. Their rulings were never really challenged. This made the world of Runeterra seem small. It was restricted to the fields of justice in both the actual game and our imaginations. The writers want to expand the world past the walls of the Institute to show that battles are still being fought, lands are still going through strife, and that new legends are constantly being made. Speaking of new legends, this was another concern Riot had in regards to the old Institute of War. The new champions always had to have a reason to join it. It was becoming tedious and bothersome to forge these fantastic background stories for characters and always add at the end, oh and yeah, they joined the Institute of War to test their strength or whatever. This is of course an oversimplification of the problem, but always adding reasons for characters to join this league was really starting to kill the story development. Every champion having a reason to join either meant that their background lore would have to be heavily geared towards this construct, or the reason would be half-assed, and neither are good for a story's development. Riot believed that champions would be more dynamic and interesting without the overshadowing burden of the League. The Institute of War also caused a whole bunch of in-game inconsistencies which players could easily pick up on. I mean, how could Riot explain the formation of teams which included hated rivals fighting side by side together, or allies killing each other and fighting on opposite sides? Since they could never restrict teams actually in-game, because that would be really silly, team compositions typically looked confusing from a lore standpoint. 
Another problem came from the idea of us players being the summoners who controlled our champions. To Riot, it felt like summoners were just too powerful and really diminished the individual strengths of the champions themselves. They were basically just puppets dancing on strings of others, making them seem more wooden and adding no real value to the story. While Riot did start to ease away from the idea of summoners by adding in a lot of special lore-based champion interactions, they still believe the idea of summoners is just not useful any longer. This is going to make the lore transition really awkward, I mean champions like Sona and Nocturne still have emotes which actually refer to us as summoners. Besides changing the emotes of some characters, Riot's in for a huge task ahead of them in regards to the rest of the lore which needs to be changed. I mean, think of it, basically every character up until this point is tied to the Institute in some way. They've already changed a lot of the characters' backstories, but more are still left. Not only do they have to change the individual characters' lore, but they also have to tie everything together. No simple task for any story, which is basically starting over. In reality though, they don't have to go and find grand reasons for why characters are fighting, only that they stand for something and eventually it'll all lead somewhere. I believe that these story changes are probably for the best. I never had a problem with the story before, but I can see where some of their concerns are founded. Opening the world up will allow for more dynamic storytelling, and removing the restriction of the Institute should create more depth than their future champions. But still, some things like the mixing of opposing factions on the same team may never really be fixed or rationalized through the story. It's just going to be a victim of the gameplay. After all is said and done, the gameplay is what's most important here. The story adds to the gameplay a narrative which gives life to the game, but with a flawed and broken game, does the story even matter? When you have a game whose components are being altered for the sake of the storytelling behind it, well that's when you have a game which is probably going to fail. League of Legends is a game. A game that I love with a story that I appreciate. I also appreciate Riot's efforts to make the story better. It shows that they care about the small minority of us who love the lore. So, even with these changes, I have no ill will towards Riot. I say just go on making a fantastic game and I hope this new lore matches that quality. So, I want to know what you guys think about Riot's retconning of its lore. Do you think this is a thing that was needed? And what do you believe will be done to the story? Let me know your opinions in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more League lore in the future, please like, share, and sub to the channel. It goes a long way in supporting future content. As always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.